Hi, I'm Tracy Noseworthy from Do Yoga With Me. Uh, the practice I have for you today is titled Breaking Down Barriers. Something I think all of us can look at, probably in many stages of life. We go into some layers of some hips, look at that resistance, dive right through it for me. Have a really fun time doing it. Namaste. Today we are going to start in the pose of Varasana. Bringing the knees together and the tops of the feet together so the toenails themselves meet the earth. Then resting quite high, hips on heels. The length of course in the side body, best you can from the hips to the armpits and resting the hands upon your thighs. And from there without lowering the chin to the chest, simply close the eyes. And begin to settle. Listening, feeling, becoming very aware of the transitions, and there are many of them. This first one being the opportunity to really, truly arrive. The physical body is the first to arrive. You've made the gesture to be here. And not far behind that is the emotional and the mental and the spiritual. So the meeting point in the shell of the human body where there is so much energy, so many systems, and so much activity, that we blend. And intuitively, those systems, that energy, those vibrations, they connect to each other. So come a little deeper into the layers of your breath beginning to note and feel the length of the inhale, the flow and the length of the exhale. And the connections that we will establish where every linking breath moves with movement and every movement connects to that linking breath. Softly connect the hands to heart center. Allow the thumbs to tap upon the sternum and the rest of the fingers to rest upon each other. And humble the chin down toward the tips of the fingers. Sometimes when we look toward a practice, I'd like to invite you today to Look at the barriers with opportunity to bust right through them. Sometimes they're obstacles and sometimes they're physical. Sometimes they're deeper than that. And usually indicative of boundaries. I'm going to play in a couple of areas in particular today to open them up and see what's there. Release the hands, please, softly towards your thighs. Draw the crown of the head back toward a tall, long spine and flutter your eyes open. From here, we're going to begin all the way up and downward facing dog. So take your time to bring yourself up into your first inverted V shape. The hands will go to the distance, outer shoulder width apart. As you lift the hips, the feet to the distance of hip width apart. And I'd like you to walk it out. So one heel toward the other heel, lifting perhaps even the toes away from the earth as you ankle the heel down. Stretching and lengthening into the sides of the body to create space to get longer in the side body. And to stay deeply connected with the base of your index fingers. From here, settle toward the stillness, toward the quiet, pressing the arms toward straight, the side body longer and the heels deeper. From here, we're gonna lift the heels on the inhale and bend your knees only halfway. Keeping the knees bent, tilt the tailbone higher and then widen the inner thighs, creating more space across the lower back, getting into the body right off the bat with a hit to the belly, to the core. Press the arms towards straight, side body longer, keep the knees bent. 
and then charge the front thigh muscle group. So lift the knees, charge the legs, and bring your low rib cage in. If you feel a shake and a shimmy, it's a good thing. Stay with that. Stay bent, knee, press the arms further towards straight, side body gets longer, knees are bent, getting into that fire element, third chakra, Manapurna. Take one more breath. Slowly begin to extend the legs towards straight, heels toward the earth, tailbone a little higher, inner, th inner thighs rotate further back. One breath in, and a long exhale out. And then lift the heels, please, as you inhale, lower the knees halfway, this time looking forward. Take your time to step toward the top of your mat and bow forward for a full exhale. Draw the fingertips to the shins, lengthen halfway, open the heart. Exhale, bring your hands toward the hips, hug the elbows toward each other, and root the feet, inhale to slowly rise all the way up. From there, find the pose of Tadasana. Palms are open. Collarbones are open and tailbone is soft. Take a breath in stillness and a long exhale to release. And on the inhale, carry the arms up overhead, interlace the fingers, turn the palms to the ceiling with the exhale. Root down, float high on the inhale and arc to the left side, please, as you exhale, keeping the right hips floating right. Inhale, come through center and exhale, arc to the right. Inhale, come up through center, stay tall, and this time twist to the left. As you twist to the left, just look to the left and keep the shoulders just square. Come back through center as you inhale, and then twist to the right, exhaling. Come back up through center on the inhale, close the palms and bow forward, long spine, meet the mat as you exhale. Come through one halfway lift, long spine. And as you exhale, bow forward, plant the palms, step back, high plank pose. Take the inhale in preparation, and on the exhale, lower the knees and then the chest and the chin to meet the earth. Inhale, that of Bhujangasana, cobra pose. And exhale through tabletop, downward facing dog pose. Take one breath in, and stay for one breath out. Inhale to lift the heels, exhale to bend the knees, inhale to step to the top of the mat through a halfway lift, and exhale to bow forward. Rooting down, rise up, inhale, the heart climbs a little higher as the palms touch and right away exhale to bow forward all the way down to meet the mat. Inhale, halfway lift. And as you exhale, step the opposite leg back first to high plank pose. And take the breath in your high plank. Option again to lower the knees and then the chest and the chin to the earth. Hug the shoulders back body. Inhale, cobra. Exhale through tabletop, downward facing dog pose. One breath in and one breath out. Inhale to lift the heels. Exhale to bend the knees halfway. Look forward, stay connected to core. Inhale, step, top of the mat, halfway lift. And exhale to bow. From here, please keep the feet the distance of your hips. Bend the knees considerably, rest the belly on the thighs. And take the fingertips of your right hand, just in front of your shoulders and the center of the shoulders. And as you inhale, float the left arm all the way up, drawing only the left leg towards straight. Lengthen the spine and send the crown of the head further forward, rotating right side body under left, look up. And from there, bend the left elbow, wrap it all the way behind your back toward the thigh of your right leg. Reach the crown forward, tuck the left shoulder back, take a breath. Release the left arm first, then look down to the earth, bend both knees and pause. Place the left hand by the right hand. As you inhale, float the right arm up, draw the right leg towards straight, and lengthen again through the sides of the body. Reaching forward with the crown of the head, lifting up at the right knee, look up to the right hand, stretch your body tall, open it up. Bend the right elbow and wrap it behind your back toward the left thigh. Tuck the right shoulder blade back body, reach the crown further forward, 
and then slow release of the right hand floats up. And as you look down, bow forward, bend both knees and relax the hands. Come through your halfway lift and lengthen. With the exhalation, bow forward, plant your palms, take your time, step again, high plank pose. Build the breath in your high plank. Lower yourself halfway this time through Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog. And exhale over the toes to downward facing dog pose. One breath in and one breath out. Carry the right leg all the way up on the inhale and place the right foot toward the right thumb. Pivot the left foot to warrior two as you exhale. Straight arms, bring yourself up to the full pose of your warrior and then settle nice and deep. Right knee stacks over ankle, left outer edge of the foot is firm and the shoulders are soft. Squeeze the energy between the feet toward the middle of the mat, sit a little deeper. And on the inhale, reach the right arm forward. And on the exhale, lower the right hand toward the inside of the foot and float the left hand all the way up and overhead. Full expansion through the chest, soften into the bend of the right knee. Bend the left elbow and wrap it again behind the back body with the option to go a little deeper, to softly look down, wrap the right arm below the right thigh, wrap to your bind, extend the side body long, and then open the chest up. Soften the right glute below you, please. Keep the left knee lifting, reach the crown of the head. You're welcome to look up. One breath in, and one breath out. The right hand touches down first, the left hand floats up. And then bring your gaze to the earth and plant both hands on the inside edge. Come to the toes of your left and lower the left knee down. Now the first variation of lizard is to open up that right foot a little bit further to the right. Get the back knee down. I'd like you to stay bright on the fingertips to pull the toes of the right foot up. So with the toes of the right foot up, roll to the blade of the foot. So a little deeper into hips. First target point of hips, little storage lockers, sankopas emotional layers that sometimes get us a little stuck. So option is to stay quite bright with the back knee down. Come to the palms if that's there. And if that's there and that feels complete, come to the forearms. And allow the forearms to rest under the shoulders. Keep the foot of the right flex and if you'd like a little bit more, bring the left knee up. So with the tone of the left knee and the roll of the right hip, can you soften the glute of the right below you and beam the heart forward? If you meet with any resistance at all, a nice choice is to look right at it. Take that breath. Lower the back knee if it is lifted. If you're on the forearms, come back to the hands. And then bring your right foot quietly back down to the mat. Take your time, charge the hands, lift the back knee so quietly, step yourself back to your high plank pose. And from plank, lift your hips to downward facing dog. Keeping the feet the distance of the hips, lift the heels, pivot both heels toward your left and maintain the shoulders square, side body gets longer, you want that space. And then inhale, come back up to the balls of the feet, pivoting heels to the right, side body gets longer, enjoy that space. And then come back up through center and press your heels back. Inhale, lift the left leg up. And with the exhalation, place the left foot to the left thumb, right foot warrior two, and strong arms to bring yourself up. And from there, gaze forward. So settle again to the left knee over the ankle. Rotate the outside edge of your right foot toward the back of the mat. Stay charged. Reach the left arm forward with your breath, and then lower the left hand to the inside edge of the foot, bringing your right arm wide open. So the beam of energy that exists there open the chest. Keep that space, and then bend your right elbow and wrap it behind your back. With the option to stay, or again, take the left hand below the thigh. Reach for that clab crawl with the hands. Bring the left rib cage under, tuck the right shoulder back, and bring your heart forward. So you're welcome to look forward or look up. Stay long with the sitting bone. Reach to the outside edge of the right heel. Take a breath. And then as you look down, release your left hand and release the right. 
Gaze down to the earth. Fingertips come underneath you as you come onto the ball of your right foot and touch the back knee down. So a little space again, that left foot, just once or twice to the left. Stay bright with the fingertips to begin and lift the toes of your left foot up. So rolling to the outside edge of that left foot, you really want to keep the toes lifted so you've got that safety in that knee. This is option one. And then the second option is to come to palms. Third, you can come down to the forearms. Now please begin to note the sides of the body. Yes, they are different. The left side of the body holds a little bit more of the feminine energy and the right a little bit more of the masculine. So recognizing sometimes the differences, barring injuries, of course. And the final option is to lift that back knee up. Tone the right inner thigh, reach the heart forward and take a few good deep breaths into these hips. And feel what you feel. Touch the back knee down first, if it is lifted. Come back to the hands below the forearms. Roll the toes of your left foot back down. And again, that connection to core strength as you root down so quietly. Step yourself back to high plank. Take the inhale and then move through your vinyasa. Exhaling. Inhale, upward facing dog or cobra. And exhale to float over the toes. Downward facing dog pose. You're going to play in down dog. Press the backs again of the heels closer to the mat. Stay long in the sides of the body. Carry a cycle of breath in and a cycle of breath out. Lift the heels. Bend your knees halfway. Looking forward, take your time to step to the top of the mat. And with the exhalation, bow a little deeper to your fold. So opening up the feet to the full distance of your mat. Pivoting the heels in and the toes open. Take your time and as you lower yourself down to the squat, to root here through the heaviness of the sitting bones and to bring the inner, el the inner knees held by the outer elbows so that you actually get to crack those hips a little wider apart. And then guide the hands softly to the heart. So your option is to keep the palms flat. If you want more space in the hips, come back to the tented fingers and then press the fingers into each other and crack the hips wider apart. You're getting low. You're getting spacious. You're getting a little vulnerable. They're good signs. So you want to stay in the cycle of your breath here and be rhythmic. Maybe close your eyes and soften. We soften the parameters of the boundaries when we knock on the door. We soften those barriers and we meet resistance. When we meet resistance head on, usually we get through it. Take one more breath. Soften the fingertips to the earth. Take your time. Float the hips back towards and then toe heel your feet back in line with your hips. Rooting down, take your arms wide and inhale, rise up. Rise up, touch the palms overhead. Exhale, hands to heart, and close your eyes. To be still, to allow the connections to blend and to meet. To feel the inner vibration. Take one more breath. And release the hands as the eyes open up. From here, keep the feet the distance of the hips. I'd like you to bend your knees a lot. And as you bend your knees a lot, draw the knees just back behind the toenails. Bring your hips to the height of the knees and bring your fingertips just in line with the baby toes. Wiggle the sitting bones back. Bring your body so this parallel to the earth and reach your hands in front of you. It is a very, very low Utkatasana. It's a very strong Utkatasana. It's a very cleansing Utkatasana. You can think ski jumpers here. So reach the fingertips forward, the so sitting bones back without moving those hips at all. Lift the upper body away from the thighs. Lengthen the tail, bring your low ribs in, power the core, power yourself, take a breath, and then join the palms back forward and exhale fully. Come into your halfway lift, long spine, open heart. Plant the palms, engage the core, step to high, or jump to low plank. Inhale your upward facing dog. 
and exhale over the toes. Downward facing dog pose. Cycle of breath in and cycle of breath out. Carry the right leg, again, all the way up on the inhale, and with the exhale, place the right foot toward the right thumb. Left foot finds warrior two, and straight arms up into the pose. Pause, draw the right leg towards straight. As you lift the right knee to the right hip back, flip the right palm, and glide the upper body forward. Pause there, realign. Lift the right knee, right hip back, reach further forward, inhale, and on the exhale, lower the right hand to the outside edge or inside edge of that front ankle. Float the left arm up overhead, spread your wings. Take the breath, wrap the right rib cage under you, open eyes to the hand that's above you or keep the eyes in front of you. Take one more breath. And then bring your left hand just to hold the hip. Looking down, bend your right knee, walk the fingertips of your right hand a good few inches in front of you and slide the left leg along the mat and then up in the air. To stack the left foot over, sorry, left hip over right hip. Flex the left foot. Find your focal point and then release the left arm. Ardha Chandrasana, gather the breath. Perhaps challenge the balance, keep your eyes soft, bring your right hand, touch the heart, trust yourself. Know you're moving through what's there. Take one more cycle. Lower the right hand first, then lower the left hand and pause. Square off the hips, flex through the left foot. Walk the fingertips of your left hand, support yourself below the shoulder, bring the left rib cage under you and open the right arm, now to the twist. Ardha Chandrasana. Rooting down with the right foot. Reach the crown of the head further forward. Bring the left body more underneath you. Open up the right. Take one more breath. Uh-huh. And then looking down, bend into that right knee. Gather the strength and the courage. And as you reach back with the left foot, sweep both arms up overhead. And there's your lunge pose. Inhale. Make it big. And then exhale. Lower the hands to the earth. The back knee will touch one more time. The right hand comes to the inside edge of the right foot. Again, and you just want to walk that foot open. So the left hand can walk a little open, and this time your right hand will just come up and rest above the knee. So it's supported very much like that lizard pose, a little bit more of dragon. So rolling your back to the blade of that right foot. Good. Plant the left palm flat. And then take your right arm up. Then lift the back knee and roll a little bit to the outside edge of that left foot. Roll to the outside of that right foot and then soften the hips. You're getting right into the outer hip, right into the outer glute. And then draw the left shoulder back body, draw the right shoulder back body, lift your heart. And then say delicious things to yourself. Take a breath. And then slowly bring your gaze back down. Roll the energy of the toes forward. Bring both hands to the inside edge of that right foot. Take your time, that slow transition steps you back, high plank pose, your breath in plank, and move through your vinyasa. Inhale, upward dog or cobra, and exhale over the toes, downward facing dog. Gather a breath in, and a long exhale out. Inhale, the left leg lifts. Exhale, left foot toward left thumb, Right foot warrior two. Straight arms. Up you come. Pausing there. And then bringing that left leg towards straight. So with the lift of the left knee and the left hip back, flip the left palm, begin to reach forward and stay. Keep the connection of the inner thigh strong. Go a little further with the breath, a little longer in the side body. And then tilt. Lower the left hand down to the outside or the inside of that front ankle. Bring the left rib cage under. Stack the right shoulder on the left shoulder. Take the inner thigh of your right back to the heel and open the chest. Breathe into the space. It's your space to breathe. And then looking down, bring your right hand to hold the hip. Bend into that left knee. Reach the left fingers forward 
and roll the right hip on top of the left hip. Turn the toes open so the hips stack and then open up that right arm. With a soft focal point, play a little. Bring your left hand to your heart. Trust it. Touch it. Feel it. Lower the left hand first. Looking down, lower the hand to the right. Tent the fingertips. Square off the hips. Root the fingertips of the right. Flex the right foot and then float that left arm up. The twist in Nardha Chandrasana. Find the length and wrap the right rib cage under you. Expand the fingers of the left higher, brighter. Expand the tone of the right inner thigh higher, brighter. One more breath in. And again, that element of trust. Bend into that left leg, that standing leg. And as you sweep the arms forward, gently step back and land your lunge pose. Big inhale. Circle the shoulders and lower the fingertips to the mat with the exhale. Touching the back knee down. Guide the left hand to the inside edge of the foot. One, maybe two, toe heels of the left open. And then that right hand again, a little bit further to the right. Pull the toes of the left heel up and then rotate to the outside edge. So the right palm can root. And as you find that space, you're going to bring that left hand now just to the middle of the top thigh. Open yourself up a little, getting into the hips. Lifting the back knee. Plugging the right shoulder back. And then rolling to the outside edge of the right foot. Stay flexed with the left foot, float the left arm up, and then experience that space. Take the left glute underneath the hip and then just say, oh yeah, to that hip. Press the right hand down, plug the right shoulder in, up, and lift yourself, that bright space. One more cycle. And then look down. Lower the hand, square off the toes, pause, stay light in the center of your body. Finding high plank pose and moving through your vinyasa. Inhale, upward facing dog. And exhale, and downward facing dog. Take a breath and empty it out. And guiding one more deep inhale and a nice long exhale. Inhale, float the right leg up. As you exhale, this time, draw the knee right into the chest so you come more toward a high plank pose. Draw the knee closer still and then lower the knee down so that the shin touches and the top of the foot touches. From there, elevate yourself to be on the fingertips and pivot the top of the right foot to the outside edge of the left and bring the left knee right up behind the right and do the same with the left, pivot it to the outside edge. So the knees here are stacking on top of each other for king pigeon and then you roll over to the sitting bones. As you roll over to the sitting bones, look to the feet, the tops of the feet rooted. So as we've been several places in hips today, you'll notice that yes, sometimes they're there and they're not happy. The happier we get the hips, we got ball and socket joints, we can move that stuff. It is just that, it's stuff. Please roll the tops of the feet down to the earth and lift your body tall. Take a breath and just acknowledge the space of the outer hip and the inner hip and the softening of the glutes. And there, take another breath. If you're happy here, stay. If you want a little more, bring your fingertips in front of you. Reach the length of the belly toward the thigh and walk your fingertips forward. Your fingertips come forward. They can come wider. They can be more tented. Elbows open. You can allow the head to become heavier and the full extension of the reach of the heart forward, almost as if it's going to pass the top of that right knee. And then melt. Be there to accept the gifts and to receive the benefits and welcome the transformation that is at hand. It's juicy, so stay. Give yourself two breaths and enjoy it. Be mindful that the journey is an ever-changing journey. And it is always changing, day by day, sometimes practice by practice. Taking your time to walk your hands back to support you with fingertips. Lift to extend the spine long. And from there, that subtle shift of weight to the hands to root the palms. 
It's the left foot first as you extend the left leg back, high plank. Draw the right knee to the chest, step back, full high plank. No vinyasa, lift the hips, and downward facing dog. Take one breath in and one breath out. Inhale, the left leg floats, and on the exhale, draw the knee into the chest. Yes, there are two glorious sides. Take a breath. Draw the knee closer, and then lower the knee down, the top of the foot down, the shin down. Up to the fingertips, and then the left foot pivots to the outside edge of the right foot, and then draw the right knee right up behind the left. So as you take that right foot open, you allow yourself that space. Snuggle in with the inner thighs. Walk your fingertips back. And then again, that opportunity for full king pigeon. So where the knees will stack, look to the feet. Generate the tops of the feet to root the energy down and then grow tall. So you welcome the space. You really want to welcome the space. Pressing down, get taller, open up the heart. If you're happy, stay. If you'd like more, bring the fingertips back down. And from there, reaching forward with the chest, walking forward very slowly. Your hands may go a few inches in front of you. And again, it is as if your chest, your heart, can bypass that left knee. And stay long. Rolling the outer thigh of the left underneath you. Same with the right. Maybe your palms come down, and maybe your belly rests, and maybe even your head relaxes fully. Be there to receive what is there to be received and see it. Feel it. Relax any unnecessary tension in the shoulders, in the neck, in the arms. Let go. The eyes and the mouth and the tongue. Soften through the lower back. Give yourself one more breath. And come back into the length of the spine. Walk the fingertips slowly back onto the mat. So it's soft. It's that shift over the knees to walk the palms flat. This time it's the right leg back to high plank first and then the left. Pause with the breath and again, no vinyasa needed. Lift the hips. Float yourself up to downward facing dog. Cycle in and cycle out. And do that one more time. And let that go. And lift both heels, the breath in, lower both knees softly without a sound on the breath out. Cross your ankles from behind you, roll over the seat. And pause. Extend the legs out in front. Today the pose of Paschimottanasana. So it's nice to walk your feet forward on the mat will automatically pull away any excess flesh from behind. You've had quite a bit of space in the hips and opening. So I'd like you to look to the toes, spread the toes, and then draw your body tall. Take the inhale, articulate a long spine, and on the exhalation, simply roll the inner thighs to the earth. Reach the hands toward the feet, ankles, shins, whatever's there. And then find that place to again lengthen, pull the shoulders back. Turn the big toes away from you and the baby toes closer the breath in. Take your time on the breath out to bow a little deeper, to rest in sensation, to lengthen the spine, to release the lower back, to breathe the breath in and out. And then become passive. Relax, actually curl, release the grip. Take that breath. And with the exhalation, take that rag doll, stack the vertebrae, climb the spine, sit taller than you did at the beginning of your practice. And then slide the hands below the knees. Shift the weight again a little closer toward the back of the mat. Bending knees, lifting arms, take your breath, take your time and lower yourself all the way down to the mat. When you meet the mat, release the hands, release the legs. Just take a breath and let yourself be heavy. And then bend the knees, please. Draw the knees in. 
Keeping the knees together, keeping the feet together. Open up the arms, that big T. Shimmy the hips toward the right. And then take a gentle twist of both knees toward the left. So it is nice to align the knees perhaps to 90. If you'd like a little more, your left hand on the outside of the right thigh can draw that deeper. And you can shift your eyes over the right. You have the space in the hips, so take the space and breathe in the space. And then release that. Release the left hand. Use your core. Inhale, bring yourself back through center. Shimmy the hips a little to the left, and then both knees toward the right. So ideally, the knees to stack on top of each other. Same with the feet. Gaze over the left shoulder. Soften into the space through the chest. And again, you can bend that right hand and just place it on top of the left thigh. Soften into the lower back. Utilize the space in the hips. Breathe into the hips. And release the hand. Draw the gaze through center. Inhale, bring your knees through center. Aligning the hips with the shoulders and extending your legs. Final pose, Shavasana. Allow the legs to be wide. Same with the hands beside the body or wider than the body. Palms open, receive it. And then let go. Trust that the body here can be held almost as if in a hammock, free of weight. Free of boundaries. Free of barriers. a few deeper breaths and bringing movement back fingers, toes, hands and wrists and then again take your time to bend the knees place the feet back on the mat extend the right arm up and overhead so it's there as a pillow as you roll to the right let the head be supported, bend the elbow cradle the head Take your time to bring yourself back to seated. So a comfortable cross-legged variation to close your practice. To rest one ankle in front of the other. To sit with a tall spine. And to bring the hands, receptivity at the heart. This mudra associated with that of gratitude. As there is gratitude, we hold gratitude for all that we do and the life that we live. And sometimes we honor deeper layers of gratitude or deeper layers of opening. Take the benefits with you as they are truly long lasting, especially in the deeper layers of the body. Thank you for sharing.
Namaste.